you landed on his face with your ass so hard the ground shook. Hello everyone and welcome back. Last time we saw Henry defeat the renowned mercenary Hagen Zul and remove the threat his group posed to the province. Hopefully nobody will steal his grain shipments again. Speaking of grain, it seems that a baker wants to make a return to Pupislavets. Master Bailiff. You're new here, aren't you? Welcome. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Sylvester is my name. I got here just this very day and came looking for you right away. Uh, I heard you was looking for a handy tradesman, see? True, but it depends what you can do. Uh, I'm a baker, sir, and if I may be so bold, one of the best there is. Good. We don't have a baker yet. So, tell me something about yourself. I'll tell you, Master Bailiff, but only on one condition. That what I say will remain only between the two of us till Judgment Day. Well, I must say that's a surprise. But yes, I swear on my honour as Bailiff. All right, then. I can see you're a worthy man. Your name precedes you. I'll be straight with you. I know this village very well, seeing as how I was here not long ago. That is, until you and Sir Radzik and his men came and cleared the place out. What, you were here? With the bandits? Uh, I was only serving them as cook and baker, like, but but soon as I saw your lot coming, I took to my heels in a hurry. I never robbed nor hurt nobody. I needed work, and them bandits paid well. After all, a man's got to make a living somehow. And them wasn't the kind of fellas you says no to. I see. So you were with Runt's band. Might someone recognise you? Far as I know, anyone who'd know my face is dead. Some thanks to you, sir. If word got out that I was hiding a bandit from the law... I'd rather give myself up than get you or anyone else into trouble. All I'm after is to start an honest life again. Fair enough. Since you came clean, I'll trust you and keep your secret. You're hired. Thank you, sir. You won't regret it, I promise you. Henry may have said it sarcastically to Kuno, but he did actually believe in second chances. It was too early to fully trust Sylvester. But there was no reason not to give him a chance to make amends. There, satisfied? Yeah, give me a minute. Good day. Yeah, give me a minute. How are you doing? Trade is booming. Hard work makes people thirsty, and there's plenty of hard work in these parts. You know, it's the first time since all those terrible things happened that I feel like I belong somewhere. Thank you, Henry. Zoratik has mentioned how lucky in soldiers he was, after the event at Skalets and Pripyslavets. Kuno's betrayal had highlighted that you couldn't just trust anybody. You need proper soldiers, and that demands a dedicated facility. We need guards to protect the village and keep the peace. And we need to build them a guardhouse. And just in time too, there's a bandit encampment right outside the outskirts of New Privy Slavins. If they've been given time to gather numbers, then the village may have suffered a grisly fate. Again. Answer to my prayer, just when I wanted to. Having a bunch of thirsty soldiers also means that Adam can't handle the increased custom at the tavern by himself. Maybe Murga would like to help. What do you need? Look here. A pretty young girl like you is wasted in a mill. Wouldn't you rather be an alehouse maid? I've got a tavern in Pribislavitz that's got everything but a woman's touch. Well, 
It'd be nice to work somewhere where there's folk to talk to. All I've got for company air is sacks of flour. I'd be glad to be your tavern maid. It's just about serving ale, right? Nothing... nothing vulgar. Don't worry. If any drunk slaps you behind, as bailiff, I'll give you the right to pour his ale down his braise. <laughs> All right, then. I'll settle my affairs here and head off. But there's no rest for the wicked. So Radzik seems to need his help to get some information out of Jezik. There's the man. Good work, Henry. I tell you to take a well-earned rest, but unfortunately I need one more thing from you. Whatever you command. Jezik refuses to talk to us. The stubborn bastards asking to see you. Me? Indeed. Normally I'd send for Captain Burner to beat it out of him, but then I told myself that if he's so keen to speak to you... I'll try to get something out of him. Where is he? He's locked up in the tower. Bernard will give you the key. Very well, sir. So, Sir Radzik let him have his way in the end. He should have let me beat some answers out of him. Don't take it that way. He probably wants to talk to me because he reckons he can hoodwink me. But that's where he's wrong. Just try not to mess it up. Here's that key. Well, finally, I've had quite a wait. Why do you want to talk to me, of all people? You brought me here. You should consider it an honor. If hanging around in a damp dungeon with a condemned man is your idea of honor... You're not seeing the bright side. You can be the one who uncovers a conspiracy against the king for your master. You don't get an opportunity like that every day. It did cross my mind, though, that it might be nice to get some assurances for my cooperation. After all, I'm the one the Margrave unjustly declared the scourge of the land and expelled from Moravia. They even pulled my beautiful castle down. It was the necessity of making a living that forced me to take some liberties. Do you really want to question the authority of the Margrave? I've always been loyal to the Crown, but what can I do when the Margrave stole my fief? That's not why we're here. I don't care about your conflict with the Margrave. It's your crimes against the King I'm worried about. The King you say you've always been so loyal to. Very well, ask me anything you want. I won't be obstructive. What I want to know most of all is who's behind it. Who were you making those forgeries for? Do you think I couldn't have handled it all myself? I'm not trying to insult you. It's just not a job one man could do alone. All right. The way it began was I was short of coin, as usual. So I let those crimps in Sassau recruit me. Recruit you into what? I didn't inquire too much. In this business, you don't ask too many questions. But when they found out I wasn't just anybody, they put me in charge of the counterfeiting. A foreigner by the name of Eric gave me instructions. But for sure, he isn't the chief. And there's someone highly placed at the monastery who's mixed up in it too. But I don't know who. How did you come to hear of all this business? I met some old friends in Colleen a few months ago. And they said they were heading for Sassau. That armed men were being recruited. And they'll hire anyone. Old friends? Who were they? Just a couple of brigands. We used to ambush the Margrave's messengers in Moravia together. Nice friends you keep. I was in dispute with the Margrave. A man in my position finds himself mixed up with all sorts. And then what? Rapota and I had been living off stale crusts for a month, so I wasn't going to turn down the chance of work, honest or otherwise. We rode to Sassau and met with the recruiters. It didn't take long to realize I was a nobleman fallen on hard times, not some common peasant. Can you get to the point? Well, they introduced me to this Eric, and he told me what was needed. They set up the workshop, got the men, the supplies, everything. Crimps? You're telling me this Eric is recruiting armed men in Sassau? Well, it seems so. I was giving the recruiters some of the coins to do it. The fake ones, of course. Where can I find the recruiting gang? That's tricky. It was my friends who led me to them. We met with them in the woods next to Sassau. It's about who you know, as always. You said you gave them money. Where was that? They'd ride to the mine gallery to see me. I don't suppose you'd find them there now. Hmm. If you say so. This Eric? You reckon he's not the one in charge? He puts on airs, but he's just a naive young pup. And he's always going on about his lord, though he never mentioned him by name. Where can I find this, Eric? You must have had some meeting place. He used to come to the workshop unannounced. And after what's happened, I doubt he'll be showing his face there again. 
This highly placed person at the monastery, what can you tell me about him? I've no idea who he is, only that he's no small fry. After all, he handles the exchange of the forgeries in Passau. Hmm, I see. Is there anything else at all you can tell me about him? No, he was supposed to supply me with materials too, but he backed out. Eric said he probably got cold feet. That'll do me for the moment. Will you put in a word for me with Sir Radzig? I'll swear allegiance to him if he'll have me. I'm sick of being a renegade. I have to think about it. I don't want to annoy Sir Radzig. Jezek is trying to leverage his cooperation for a possible promotion. Henry can take it up with Sir Radzig, but it's worth remembering that any promises you make are not just yours. They're done on behalf of Sir Radzig. There's some foreigner called Eric behind the counterfeiting ring, and someone highly placed at the monastery. The monastery? Really? That's what Jezek claimed. So it's worse than I thought. If this is true, we'll have to proceed with the utmost caution. Why? Can't we just go to the monastery to investigate? No. If the church is truly involved, I have no authority. But if someone at the monastery is perpetrating crimes against the crown... True enough. Why don't I go and arrest King Sigismund of Luxembourg while I'm about it? He's committed a crime or two as well. I'll have to think about it. It won't be an easy nut to crack. I'll have to consult with Hanush. And what of this Eric? Who is he? I don't know, but he's recruiting armed men in Sassau and forming an army. Damn! So it looks like Pribislavitz wasn't the end of it. It most certainly wasn't, sir. And what's more, Sir Jezek is convinced this Eric is only a go-between, and there's someone bigger behind him. You should return to Sassau and take a closer look at those recruiters. If they're going to attack, we must find out sooner than last time. It might not be as straightforward as that. Sir Jezek didn't know them and has no idea how to find them. You'll have to manage somehow, my lad. Don't tell me there's an armed force amassing here and nobody knows anything. Go to Sassau and try to find them. Oh. I know Miller Simon at the Sassau Mill. There you are. Millers usually know what's going on behind the scenes. Go there and talk to him. Whatever you do, be careful, Henry. And best not mention my name. It would attract unwelcome attention. What we want is for the crimps to take you for just another village lad they can lure into their gang. All right, sir. I'll try to blend in as best I can. I know I'm asking a lot of you. But I know of no one else who could help as much as you can now. Sir, there's one more thing. Sir Jezek went with me without resistance because I promised him he could come to an agreement with you. My boy, my boy. You make promises in my name. That could turn out very badly for both of us. But, if it can prevent bloodshed, why the hell not? We may well come to some arrangement after all, but I can't say yet what will become of him. You'd better run along. If Henry's made contacts during previous visits to Sassau, there's several ways to find out how to contact the bandits. The Millers have a reputation for criminal activities, and Henry knows from experience that Simon is a Miller who definitely engages in that. Listen, have you heard of any recruiters looking for men in Sassau? Aye. And? Where can I find them? And will they speak with me? And what do you want with them? Never mind. Listen to me carefully. Tomorrow night there will be a light in the Sassau church and the door will be open. Go in and start praying our father. And how will that help me with the recruiters? That's what the prayer's for. Just wait until the church is lit up at night. Kneel before the altar and they'll find you. Got it? Of course. And thank you for the help. The Lord will repay you. Another way to find the information he needs is to speak to the unknown man in Johanka's sick ward. Henry saved his life by resetting his broken leg. Uh, uh, what do you want? How are you doing? Feeling better yet? Aye, much better. I'm truly grateful. Be a bit longer and I'll be able to run back to the woods and carry on. Well... Never mind. Very kind of you to look in on me. Truth be told, I didn't come just for your health. What do you need? Well, I've heard tell there's work for fearless men who enjoy a bit of silver. Ah, I believe I can help you with that. They used to frequent the tavern, but now they meet in the church. The church? Aye, that's right. The church is locked at night, but if you see a light, the door will be open. Go in there and wait. Say a prayer or something, and then you'll see. That's it? 
I don't need to speak to anyone. Just doing what I told you is enough. <laughs> They'll give you a good look over and see if you've got the metal. Don't you worry about that. All right, thank you. <laughs> you took care of me, why wouldn't I help you? Tit for tat, eh? Good luck then. But let's say that Henry doesn't know anybody to speak to. Taverns are the places where everybody congregates, and innkeepers have their finger on the pulse of any town they're in. They do mention that there were some rough fellows that loved to fist fight. I'm looking for some people you might know something about. If they come here to drink, maybe. But I won't aid you in any mischief. I've heard some rough men come here looking to recruit. Have they ever stopped in to eat or drink, or to arrange something? There were some brawlers that used to fight behind the tavern, but they raised such a commotion, I went and complained, and a town watch drove them off somewhere. I wasn't thinking about that lot. I'm looking for recruiters that hire mercenaries and other cutthroats. Don't know about that. Every once in a while, a merchant will hire some help or an escort, but nothing more. Nobody comes here regular. I'd notice if they did. Do you happen to know where the brawlers you complained about moved on to? Um, I've not got the slightest inkling. I'm just glad all the shouting stopped. It scared the horses in the stables. Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? And what's your idea of suspicious? Have you heard of anyone looking to hire some rough men? Mercenaries, you mean? Yes. There were some fellows conspiring here in the corner twice a week, and others coming and going. They didn't look entirely respectable, but they never made any trouble. And what happened to them? I don't know, they just stopped coming. And I haven't seen hide nor hair of them since. You haven't heard anything about where they went? How could I have? They just stopped coming, and that's that. Where do you think they might be meeting now? How should I know? I'm an honest innkeeper, not a man at arms. They could be meeting at another inn. They could be meeting in the woods by the light of the moon, for all I know. Is there any way I'll recognize them? Unquenchable thirst? They drank like fish. They were rough looking too. Big bearded and scruffy. Aside from that, they mostly kept to themselves. That's not much help. What did they do while they were waiting for someone? They drank. And they played dice. I do remember there were always dice on the table. So they were fond of dice, were they? And where would you find a game around here? Anywhere there's dice and usually drink. That's all you need for a game. Although it dawns on me now, I never saw Simon with those men, oddly enough. He's got a nose for drunken dice players with a coin to lose. Simon who? Why, the young miller. He runs Katzik Mill. Neighbours are always slandering him for trafficking, but who knows? Maybe he just has a knack for business. You can also speak to the bailiff, but it seems that Henry is unable to keep secrets and blabs that Sir Radzig is interested in the bandits, which is exactly what Sir Radzig told him not to do. I've got a few questions for you, bailiff, if you don't mind. Have you been having some trouble around here? And what business is it of yours? Did someone complain? Who sent you here? No one complained, though I'd be interested to know why you think they might. It was Lord Radzig who sent me. He'd heard word that some unsavoury characters are holed up round here. Begging your pardon? But what the devil does Sir Radzig care about it? And I keep hearing the same from Sir Sebastian. And he's got no dog in this fight either. Sir Sebastian? Who's that? Sebastian Baron von Berg. He's here under monastery law to protect us against all this unrest in the land. Why should he care about the city? That's not his jurisdiction, is it? Quite true. I'm in charge of this city, but he keeps telling me I've got cutthroats hiding around here and I should be more vigilant. The goal of the man. I heard some recruiters are meeting in Sassau. Seemed likely they'd get up to mischief and people might complain. Do you think that people here complain and I don't do my job? Nothing of the sort. Old Lederman's the only one that comes complaining, but I pay no heed to him. And what does this Lederman complain about? Lederman is our local tanner, lives by the quarry, which is where, well, some youngsters go there to wrestle. They go there to fight and that doesn't bother you? Why would it bother me? Much better to brawl there than in the tavern. At least in the quarry they can't damage anything but each other. And my catchpoles go by there from time to time to keep an eye on things. You have an inn and the horse trails cross here. There must be many travellers come seeking work and not all of them honest men. Aye, it's true. 
Bedlam has broken out once or twice, and restoring order was no easy matter. Has there been anything like that lately? No. It's been quiet here lately. But now that I think about it, I don't recall coming across anyone here like that. Nobody looking for soldiering work, maybe as a merchant's guard? There's always one or two like that. But if they don't get the job, they move on. Thank you, Bailiff. All signs point to the rough fellows meeting at the quarry, and speaking to the Tanner confirms that. Along with a request to get rid of them. Tanner, I've heard all's not well with you. It's better now. I must have eaten something bad. No, I mean you've complained about some ruffians raising hell behind your house. Aye, true enough. That lot's been a thorn in my side. And when I went to tell them to take it elsewhere, they nearly beat me to a pulp. When are they there? Nearly every evening. Every godforsaken evening. Shouting and bellowing there till nightfall. And then they leave. Probably to get drunk. How many of them are there? How would I know? They make as much noise as a herd of wild boar in rutting season. And did they all attack you? I. They knocked the stuffing right out of me. And nobody does a thing about it? I've been to the bailiff, but he couldn't give a rat's arse. There's no commotion under his window, so what does he care? That's quite a bailiff you've got. A scarecrow would keep better order. With a bit of luck, they might leave on their own. I can't wait. They've been making such a commotion, it's a wonder the piss stays in the pot. If you want, I'll take care of them. Well, you look like you could move mountains, but there are several of them and just one of you. Perhaps we'll be able to settle things peacefully. Maybe. They might think twice before kicking your arse. Perhaps I can reason with them. It doesn't have to come to blows. Well, break a leg, lad. Or better yet, don't. But if you manage to pull it off, you'll get your reward. Don't worry. See you later. Seems that this fist fight is allowed to sit on people's faces. But you better not mention it to them. It was before that. He's talking about that scrapper from Rutte. I didn't sit on anyone. How many fucking times do I have to tell you? You landed on his face with your ass so hard the ground shook. You're an ass. You'd better hope I don't shake you. All I'm saying is that's the way it looked. You fell on him and then sat on his face. You too, you bastard. I've already told you what really happened. So we all saw it wrong. What really happened then? I knocked him down, and he pulled me down on top of him. I slammed him with my hip, not my ass. I just don't know. Looked to me like you had his nose right between your nether cheeks. You little piece of shit. You want to have a go? Boys, don't fight. I heard that someone was looking for men willing to do anything. Do you know anything about that? No, but I'm always the last to hear of anything like that. I'll ask Punch. He'd know. I heard you gave him quite a beating. It's his own damn fault. Really? He just came to tell you to go elsewhere. That's what he told you? Bollocks! He came of his own accord. It was him started the fuss, after he'd lost all his money. He really tried to have a go? I wouldn't think he'd have it in him. He tried, but he didn't have much luck. He does pack a punch. But landing it in the right place... I'm not surprised he's got no children. I heard someone was looking for men willing to do anything. Do you know anything about it? Maybe. I work in the quarry, and they're always looking for extra hands to replace them that's got something broken. Oh, that's not what I meant, but thanks. Why did you thrash the tanner? Because he came by one day, lost his money, and then started on about how we cheated him and ought to give him back his coin. He was a right pest. He told me that you jumped him when he asked you to stop making a racket behind his house. Well, that's sort of true. But he didn't start complaining until he lost his money. Before that, it didn't bother him. I've heard that someone's looking for men willing to do anything. Do you know anything about it? If I knew you better, I might tell you. But as things stand... What went on with the tanner? When things got lively, I wasn't here. The others were, though. Go ask them. I heard that someone's looking for men willing to do anything. Do you know anything about that? Willing to do anything? Meaning what? 
something filthy like helping the knacker. I wouldn't know. Go and ask someone else. That's not what I meant, but all right. What happened with the tanner? Nothing out of the ordinary. He came to test his metal like everyone, but he couldn't even get past young weed. Then he started whining about getting his money back because we tricked him, so we threw him out. He came back a few times after that complaining about all the shouting and ordered us to bugger off elsewhere. But you didn't? No. And when he got really annoying, he got a punch in the mouth and he hasn't been back since. Doesn't dare to. But it didn't shut that big mouth of his. What are you doing here? Nothing special. Just a little evening wrestling. It's good for your back and digestion. And your purse too if you know your business. The tanner sent me. He says you've been causing a commotion at night, and I thought I might convince you to stop. Ha! <laughs> so all his whining finally found a friendly ear, did it? Let me tell you something first, whelp. I'm the bailiff's man, and we're not doing anything wrong here. Old Letterman's only been whining like that since he lost a bit of silver. Didn't bother him before that. He told me different. Ha! <laughs> of course he did. Otherwise, no one would help him. Go ahead and ask the lads. They'll tell you the same. It's God's honest truth. I'll take you at your word. But what should I do now? The way I see it, you've got two choices. Screw that old liar and leave him be or get down to business. What do you mean, get down to business? Well, you may think you're pretty tough. And if you give us all a thrashing, we might think it over. But then again, we're no strangers to a hard fight. If I break your arm, then you won't be coming here for a while, will you? But I'm a fair fellow, so I'll make you an offer. If you enter our tournament and win, which means beating us all, then we'll go elsewhere. If you don't win, then you're flat out of luck and have to leave. That's not so bad, is it? You look pretty good. But I'm betting it was just luck. That wasn't bad. But let's see how you do with me. But now we'll take it up a notch. You put on quite a show. Can't say I expected it. That was pretty good. I didn't think you had it in you. You were really good. I've got to hand it to you. Most lads don't make it past me. So listen, I want to tell you something. What's that? There are people here looking for really tough men, and I'd say you fit the bill. So when you walk through town this evening, if there's a light in the church, go in and wait a while. If they like the looks of you, they might give you some work. Thanks. I'll think about it. Look here, lads. I hope I won't be seeing you around here again. Go and find some other place for your games. All right, all right. We'll go. But if you want to fight again, you're always welcome. I bet you'll come off worse next time. You. It's pretty interesting that Punch is one of the bailiff's men, yet he seems to have close contacts with the bandits. Seems that Sir Sebastian is right to be concerned about the bailiff's interest in keeping the law, even if he himself is involved with other bandits. Does it really not bother you that your men also go to the quarry to fight? Why should it bother me? You call it fighting, I call it training. Once they start smashing heads with sticks or stabbing each other in the back, then I'll intervene. But until then... And you don't mind that they wager on it? Seems to me that's less of a sin than wagering on dice. I've nothing against one of those fellows earning some extra money if he's good. I might have to hire them to help out in town if there's any more trouble. So you don't plan on doing anything about it? What concern is it of yours? If they start brawling all over town and attacking people, then there'll be cause to take them in. But for now, let them keep fighting. But after all that, Henry now knows how to contact the bandits. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. What? So, you've been looking for us, eh? What is it you want? I hear you're hiring men who don't mind getting their hands dirty. Is that so? And where did you hear that? Taverns and the like. People talk. Well, that's a pretty tale. 
But no one in any tavern told you to come here and wait, did they? So let's have it. Who told you? I don't recall his name, but he was one of your friends. He said that he couldn't take me straight to you, that I had to go through the church. He was right about that. But he still said more than he should have. I know my way around. You won't go wrong with me. Spare me the boasting. I've got a test ready for you. Let's see how you handle it before you tell us how wonderful you are. What test? Nothing complicated. We used to take anyone who looked like they could keep their head on straight. But not now. Now you can only join if you do what we tell you. Which is what? Steal something? Nah, not theft. If you want to join us, you have to kill Pius. Who's Pius? And why should I kill him? That's none of your business. But I'll tell you anyway, because it's an instructive tale. Pius was one of us, but he fucked up. How? Did he steal something? Yeah, that was part of it. Stole some money, ran away. A few boys died over it. Showed a distinct lack of loyalty. And as soon as he's dead, you can join us. I'll have to find him first. <laughs> you don't need to find him. We know where he is. Then why haven't you killed him yourselves? It's quite a test. He's hiding in a monastery. With the stable boys? It's not hard to get into the grounds. <laughs> no, not there. I would have been dead long since. He's in the, uh, cloister, or whatever it is. But only monks can get in there. <laughs> Just monks and pious. He's an educated bastard. Seems he used to be a priest, but it didn't quite work out. And how am I supposed to get into the cloister? You'll think of something. Maybe there's a secret passage. I've heard there's some cave underneath. The cave of St. Procopius. There might be a way into it from outside. And do you have any other ideas besides secret passages? Well, there is this one fellow been hanging around the taverns. Supposed to join the monastery soon. Might be he could help you somehow. I'd try talking to him if I were you. And if he doesn't help, knock him on his ass and take anything he's got that you could use to pass yourself off as him. A letter of admittance to the monastery, or whatever. Murder someone in a monastery? Have you gone mad? <laughs> Murder's a sin as it is. Doesn't really matter where you do it. Yes, it does. I'd be spilling blood on hallowed ground. <laughs> well then, knock him senseless, drag him outside, and finish him off where it's less sacred. I don't give a damn where you do it, just as long as he ends up dead. And do you have any other test? We're not hiring stable boys. We want men who are prepared to do anything. And this is the toughest task we've got. So how many men have you already sent? Uh, just a handful. And what happened to them? Did they hang? Uh, just the first one. The others turned tail. Guess they didn't have the stomach for it. How will I recognize Pius? He won't have been there long. He should be the only new one there. But what if there are others? What does he look like? Normal. He always went about well-dressed and had a fine-looking dagger. Yes, except he'll be given a robe and they'll take his knife. Then you'll have to try and figure out which one of the novices it is and get him to betray himself. Try getting him drunk. Then send him straight to hell. Get him drunk? In a monastery? <laughs> Where better? There's more wine there than in the royal cellars. And I doubt he suddenly stopped drinking. Fine. So I've got to kill Pius. He's in the cloister, and to get into the cloister, I'll need to enlist the help of some boy who's joining the order, right? More or less. And now the main thing. The main thing is to kill him, isn't it? <laughs> of course. But that's not all. All hell's gonna break loose in the monastery after the murder. So, either make sure nobody finds him, or hightail it out of there quick as soon as the job's done. But better if they don't find him right away. And what else? Should I come back here afterwards? No, no. Before you run for it, take his special dice and bring it as proof that you killed him. And if you can get him to tell you where he hid the coin, bring that as well. Bring his dice and the money if I find it. And where should I bring it? From the monastery, head east across the river. There'll be a swamp where you'll find a fire pit. Go there at night and light a fire. Make it nice and big and we'll show up. Take the dice and the money and then tell you where to report. Got it? 
Right, I'm to slip into the best guarded place in the entire region and kill someone. Take his dice and money, and then go to the swamp and wait by the fire. Yeah, that's the idea. <sighs> well, you can at least say a few Hail Marys for me. I'm gonna need all the help I can get. The monastery is definitely involved in shady affairs. If you recall during the coin counterfeiting incident, a higher ranking monk was involved with Yezhyuk and helped him blackmail in the overseer's hand for the mercury. So Radzik would have to know. So, this investigation into the Neuhof massacre. It's getting a bit complicated. What have you found out? I tracked down a gang of robbers who recruited killers for Pribislavitz. They know the Horsons who torched Neuhof. That's excellent news. Did you find out any more? So far, not much. If I'm going to infiltrate them, I have to do what they say. That means murdering one of their former cronies, a fellow they call Pius. Apparently he was at Neuhof too. You have to kill a criminal to prove yourself to them? Huh. I don't much like the sound of it. That's not the worst of it. This Pius is hiding out in the monastery pretending to be a novice. I'd have to get inside the cloisters to get at him. <laughs> Good God above, that's another matter entirely. They don't let just anyone into the cloisters, and the abbot won't give up any of the novices. Secular law has no jurisdiction inside the monastery. But this is the second time that something untoward has happened there. First the counterfeiters, now this. I'd be glad to have someone take a look inside. It seems like the only way to find Pius is to join the order. Damned if I know how, though. A bit of meditation and learning would do you good. If it's really the only way to get to him, then you'll have to do it. I'm sorry I can't be of much help. Sadly, my relations with the monastery aren't entirely congenial. You'll have to figure something out for yourself. What should I do with Pius once I find him? Don't kill him. Bring him to the bailiff in Rate. He'll interrogate the man and give him a fair trial. It doesn't sound like an easy task, sir. Getting into the cloisters, finding Pius and then getting him to the bailiff. Far from it, lad. But I have confidence in your abilities. Carl is staying at the Sasa Wagon is in, but he has a chaperone keeping a close eye on him. It's it's the the best. Good harvest. God bless them. Are you Carl by any chance? I am. Why do you ask? I've heard that you're bound for the monastery. Yes. Yes, it's true. But I've convinced my faithful guardian, Manfred, to give me a few more days of freedom. Mind you, he won't let me visit the brothel. So instead, I'm devoting those days to the demon drink. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? My name is Henry. Pleased to meet you, Henry. Could we speak in private? Pull me an ale. I have some um, issues with the monastery. Really? Well, I'd love to talk about it, but we won't have privacy as long as Manfred what? here has his head permanently stuck up my arms. Get rid of him for me, please. Henry has to get rid of Manfred before he can speak to Carl about exchanging places. You're Manfred, the young lord's guardian? Indeed I am. Why? Would you let us have a word in private for a moment? I would not. If I put my guard down for a second, he'll be gone. I have to keep my eye on him. You must have a mighty thirst. Waiting here with him for days, just watching him get drunk, and not having a sip yourself. There's no doubt I'd enjoy a drink. Right. Heaven knows I deserve right. it. But if I dull my senses in the slightest, that rogue will surely get up to mischief. So let's drink together. And if you start to feel unwell, I'll keep an eye on him. Like you said, you deserve some fun. I can see you're a reliable lad. So what shall we have to drink? And while we're at it, why not have a little game? Good game. You deserve it. To good neighbours. Manfred's taken care of, just as you wanted. Like Thank God. He won't let me out of his sight for a second, and he's itching to get me in the monastery so he can head back home. Why are you being sent to the monastery? Like every lusty young lad, I'm fond of fair maidens, but I got too fond of one, and let's just say she was, um, indisposed for nine months. But they don't send you to the monastery for that. They do, when it's the daughter of the Lord of your feet. Shit.
Shit is putting it mildly. The Lord of Bukova was less than pleased. He knows he'll never marry off his daughter now, so he gave father a choice. Either pay him 1,000 groschen in compensation, along with my balls on a silver platter, or pay 1,000 groschen and put me away somewhere no one will ever see me again. Why does your guardian never leave your side? So I don't run away. Of course, I'm free to walk around, but he watches every step I take and won't stop until I'm behind the monastery walls. Well, he's not watching you now. What good is that to me when he has all the money, and even my saddle and riding cloak under lock and key? What if I entered the monastery instead of you? What? Voluntarily? You don't look like someone who'd want to spend the rest of his days on his knees praying. But that's your problem. You could only enter the monastery if you know how to read and write, and if you have a special writ from the abbot. That's a letter confirming they know who you are and that they've accepted you. So you give me your writ? I'll just tell them I'm you. Manfred has the writ. You'd have to take it from him, but he only puts it down when he sleeps. So I'll steal it and then you can disappear. Disappear? Bear asked. What the hell would I do? I don't know how to work, I have no money, and that old bastard's even taken my cloak. He has me in the palm of his hand. But there are poor people everywhere and they get by somehow. If I have to choose between hunger and poverty on one hand and the monastic life on the other, I'm afraid the monastery wins. If I could only steal that old man's pouch, I'd be gone faster than lightning and no one would ever see me again. What are you barking at? You want to punch in the face? Is there anybody I want to punch in the face? What? Are you volunteering to get your head smashed in? That's right. Let's go. Carl will want the entire contents of Manfred's purse, but Henry can choose to give him half, or even nothing at all. What? Are you volunteering to get your head smashed in? Oh! Oh! I've got what you need. Excellent. Give me the purse. You can do as you like with the writ. You're getting nothing. I'm keeping the money. That's what I get for making an honest deal with you? Not a chance. Give me that money or I'll take it by force. Stop. Are you staring at me? Here's half the purse. Half? What about the rest? I'm keeping it for my efforts. Well, I can't say that seems like fair to, to me, it. but what can I do? See you later. It's unlikely that Carl will my want pleasure. to give away that someone else has taken his place in the monastery. But if Henry leaves him with no money or little money, then Carl is likely to be forced to go back to his family with an open hand. So it's in Henry's interest to give him all the money, so he goes far away for a long time. At least long enough to not throw a spanner in Henry's plan to infiltrate the monastery. Excellent. Give me the purse. You can do as you like with the ring. Here you are. Good luck, no matter what you plan on doing with those monks. Best be on your way now before Manfred finds out that he's been robbed. And what are you going to do? Get my things together and disappear. I want to be as far away as possible before that old man even knows I'm gone. But as the saying goes, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Henry will be by himself once inside, with no access to the tools and weapons he's used to having. Moreover, the monastery is secure not just against people trying to enter, but also people trying to escape. Carl wouldn't be the only reluctant monk. Preparing an escape route, in the form of lockpicks, would be wise unless Henry really likes the monastic life. It's also possible to kill the novices in order to fulfill the bandit's request. Of course that brings up the question of who Pius is. Unfortunately, 
people don't walk around with name badges floating above their heads. Moreover, Pius is a nickname, and even then, all monks take on monastic names once they join. The easy solution is to simply kill everyone, but that is an extreme approach. Another might be to surreptitiously look over the novice's possessions, to find the special dice mentioned by the bandits. But unfortunately the dice only manifest once you kill the right novice. One might even wonder where Pius was hiding it. Trying to kidnap the novices to question them outside only yields a telling off unfortunately. What do I have to do to enter the monastery? You have to know how to read and write, speak Latin and have a letter of admission from the abbot. But most importantly, your soul must be filled with Christian fervour and you must be willing to lay down your life for our saviour. Letter of admission? Great! That's the least of your worries. By the look of you, I'd say your biggest problem will be your lack of zeal. So you won't get the letter of admission anyway. Tell me, are you capable of spending your days in quiet meditation and prayer to our Lord? Of renouncing the flesh and raising your spirit to the service of God? For some reason, they don't believe they're a kidnapper to be worthy of joining the monastic order. Ah! Can't imagine what that would be. Christ. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.